Hello! A boost converter and a buck converter. You can find these things on AliExpress and they're fairly recognisable because they've got this rather old school uh, 16 by 2 LCD display which I assume they're using because they're sort of plentiful and cheap. Um, but to give these their official names, now I've got to try and do this without blowing stuff up. Um, this one is the DPX800S, but I had to write it on there because nowhere does it say that on the PCB or indeed on the display. It's not in the firmware. And the buck converter is the DPQ. 9010. This is a 10 amp unit, 90 volts out maximum. Um, you can also get the DPQ ooh, 6012, so that's 12 amps output but only 60 volts out. I'll come back to this 90 volts out in a bit because I'm not 100% sure it would be a good idea to try and get 90 volts out of this. Right, what's on the display? Well, this one is on so that it's passing uh, power to this one. If I switch it off, this one powers down, which is interesting because that wouldn't normally happen with a boost converter, but this one has an interesting output switch MOSFET. So when you turn it off, it actually um, disconnects the output. But let's turn it on and go through the display. This is in constant voltage mode. It's not current limiting. Uh, voltage is on the left and current is on the right. The input voltage is on the bottom left and here we have watts. Now when you switch this off, everything moves to a new position. <laughs> I don't quite know why and it's really quite bizarre. Voltage then becomes at the top. I suppose it's at the top there. Current is at the bottom. The input voltage is over here but it doesn't actually say in next to it whereas when it's switched off it does. Um, and there's an off symbol which is useful. So let's switch this one on. Um, that's set to 13 volts. There's 13 volts coming out. You can see the input voltage has moved down here. Um, it is 36 volts because the booster is boosting to 36 volts. You can see that top left there. Um, this says it's in constant voltage mode, although there does seem to be a problem with this DPQ unit. Uh, even when it's in constant current mode, it still says CV there. This one works fine. You see it go from CV to CC. This one, no, it doesn't work. It just sits there saying CV all the time. Okay, now there's a menu system. Uh, the star shows you which parameter you're going to adjust with the rotary encoder. So this will adjust voltage and as I turn it, I'm varying that digit. You've got left and right arrows here and I can use them to move to other digits. So if I want to modify the 3 of 13, I can adjust that digit with the rotary encoder. If you press, uh, oh I think that's select, no set, press set, now you can adjust the current. If you press it again, it sort of vanishes. But then if you turn this, there's another menu. You can set to the low voltage protect. That's a voltage under which this will shut off the output. You can set the startup voltage. Now this is kind of works with the low voltage protect. So you can set the low voltage protect to turn this off at a certain voltage and the startup voltage to turn the output back on when the input voltage rises back up. There's also over voltage protect, over current protect, uh, adds, oh I don't know what that is, and ATO. This is the um, state that it will start up in. Either the output will be off when power is first applied to this or it will be on. Now the menu in the boost converter is similar. Let's turn it off so I can select uh, volts, amps or nothing and then start turning this dial. Low voltage protect, start up voltage, uh, over voltage protect, over current protect. Then there's ATO, that's where it uh, either comes on or off at start up. And then there's mode and you've got normal or MPPT. And that's not a true maximum power point tracking. Ah uh, yes, when only one of these units is on, <laughs> the power bank doesn't get enough power and shuts down.
Anyway, I think you got the gist. There's some sort of MPPT function on this boost unit so that you could put a solar panel on the input, boost up to a higher voltage and charge a battery and the MPPT system will try and keep the voltage on the input to uh, where approximately you're going to get most power from the solar panel, but it doesn't track. Right, let's put some cables on the output of the um, buck converter and then I will attach a load to it and we can see some current values. Right, so here's a 24 volt uh, vehicle brake light bulb. Input to the boost converter is 12.8 volts. The output is 36 volts. Uh, this is currently on. That's why this is powered up. Uh, input to this unit is this 36 volts down here. Output will be 12 volts with a current limit of 4 amps. So let's switch it on and you can see the bulb comes on there. Um, now we have the ability if you press set to adjust the 12 volts while the unit's on. So, oh, do I have to work a bit quicker than that? Set, move that to the left, 13, 14, 15, and I can take that bulb all the way up to uh, 24 volts. Remember, this is a buck converter. It's stepping down the input voltage, currently 36 volts to 24 volts now. Uh, so that lamp is now at, uh, well, full brightness, sort of. Now you can see at 24 volts, this lamp is drawing 0.9 amps. So let's set the current limit on this unit to say 0.8 amps. And then we can see it go into current limit and see if the CV changes to a CC. Uh, so turn this unit off, let's do that. Move the set down to the four amps. I wanted to change that to 0.8. I can use the tenths uh, digit to bring that all the way down to 0 0.8. There it is. Okay, switch the unit back on. Um, so we're now limiting at 0.79. That's probably the 0.8 that I've set. Let's adjust current uh, voltage, I mean. So it's not actually getting up to uh, this, these figures here, this 24 volts, because if I wait for a second, this will drop out of the editing mode. It's only able to get up to 18.8 .8 volts. It's limiting at 0.8 amps. So it's definitely in current limiting mode, and yet it says CV. And that's because this one has a firmware bug and never actually shows CC at all. Okay, let's turn this off. Um, now I'm going to change the current limit uh, back to, I don't know, two amps or something like that. But I'm going to change the overcurrent protect, uh, which is on. How do I actually edit it? That's that. No, it's uh, on. I think you have to press that. That's it. So let's move across to this one. And I'll bring it all the way down to uh, 0.8. And we'll see what happens if we trigger the overcurrent protect. Uh, I think you press, what's that? Mer. I don't know what mer means. It's not memory, anything like that. But anyway, that seems to have set it. So let's come out of this menu, go back to here, switch on, and it's gone into overcurrent protect. So it's actually shut off the output now that it's gone over 0.8 amps. Rather than just limiting the current, it's actually gone into a protect mode and puts a little overcurrent protect marker on the screen. Uh, let's watch that happen while I actually turn it. So let's adjust voltage uh, by going set and then I'll gradually increment the voltage and wait for the current to get up to 0.8 amps and there it is it goes into overcurrent protect okay let's try the low voltage protect so i've set that to 30 volts uh, let's go back to here i think i can turn that lamp back on oh, it keeps going into overcurrent protect let's turn the voltage down i'll probably have to do that here that's interesting it won't let me uh, okay, let's turn that back down to 15 volts or there. 
thereabouts. Turn this on. Now I'll start winding the voltage on the boost converter down. So let's go set on that down to 35, 34, 3, 2, 1. And we should go under the uh, low voltage protect. It's flickering, but it hasn't actually said low voltage protect. Well, I wonder if that's because, let's turn this off and just check whether the startup voltage is set. Yeah, let's turn that off because it's saying it should switch back on if the startup voltage is over 11 volts. So uh, save that. So it's got low voltage protect of 30 volts, but no startup voltage. Okay, let's come back out. Um, turn this one back up to say 32 volts. Okay, let's turn that on. Now let's wind this one down, 31, 30. And yes, this has gone into low voltage protect. It's saying that the input voltage is 28.9 volts. Right, let's see these uh, two little fans come on. Got a feeling the fan on one of them is five volts and the fan on the other is 12 volts. Now you'd think that the fan on the boost converter would be five volts, but I think that's the 12 volt one. I'll check this in a minute. And this is the five volt one. You'd think this would be the lower voltage so that you could use a lower input voltage, but no, that's not the case. I've got a feeling the minimum input voltage is 10 volts or something like that. Anyway, let's turn on this car headlamp bulb uh, with 12 volts. So that comes on and now you can see the fan is running there and the fan is also running there. These automatically come on, I think, at a predetermined current of two amps, but that's not two amps, is it? I think there's also a watts figure. Um, interesting, note the difference in watts, 46 watts here and 39 here. So there are losses in the system. We can effectively work out an efficiency from that. Right, let's turn this lamp on at 12 volts. I've got a current limit on the boost converter now of two amps. So let's now start turning up the voltage on the buck converter to 14, 15 volts. And as we get to two amps on the boost converter, it goes into current limit, but then it goes into a collapse of voltage and has dropped right down to 11.7 volts, which is basically 12.4 minus a diode drop. Now this is only getting 11 volts input, and so it can only put 11 volts out, so the brightness of the bulb has suddenly fallen. That's quite interesting. I wonder if you can explain what's going on there. I think I've got an idea, but it's quite complicated. Turn this off, and the boost converter springs back up to 36 volt output. Turn this back down to 12 volts. So there we are. That's the uh, DPS, no, DPX, I think, 800S. And this one is the DPQ. And this one is the 90 volt variant. Uh, DPQ 9010, so 10 amp. Now I did say, didn't I? I was going to say why I didn't think that this could put 90 volts out. The listing for this actually says that you can put a maximum of 100 volts in and in fact the maximum output of the boost converter is 120 volts so be a bit careful. So down here on the left hand side bottom left of the buck converter there's a little 8 pin chip it's a Senlywell SL3036 and it's a buck converter. There is a little inductor just under the display uh, there there's a capacitor there's a diode there's all the stuff you'd expect with the buck converter. There's also this uh, on LED which is completely unnecessary because it just duplicates what the backlight of the display does. But anyway back to the SL3036. Uh, here's the data sheet for this SL3036 uh, buck converter. Now it says it's an 8 to 100 volt at 2 amp step down constant voltage constant current chip. Uh, built in MOS 100 volt switching uh, blah blah blah. The input voltage range of SL3036 is 8 volts to 100 volts. But then further down it says wide input voltage range 8 to 90 volts. So is it 8 to 100 volts 
or is it 8 to 90 volts? And here you've got V in is 10 to 90 volts in their application circuit. So I'd just be a little cautious of sticking 100 volts into the input of this chip. You might want to limit it to 90 volts. So uh, yeah, that's the uh, DPX800S uh, boost converter, the DPQ. Oh, 9010 buck converter. Um, high current, both of these are 10 amp. I have actually run the boost, uh, the buck converter at, I think it was 8 amps. I was charging uh, one of those LTO cells and it seemed perfectly happy. Nothing was getting particularly hot. Um, so, yeah, these seem to work quite well and they're high voltage and also high current. But that's it for now. Cheerio.